This is Rob Cedar, and in today's segment, we're going to continue with part three of setting up our laptop data center using Hyper-V on Windows 8. So this is part three of the series, and uh, hopefully you've watched the first uh, two parts, so this will make a little bit more sense. In part one, we, we showed that we're basically starting from a Windows 8 workstation that has Hyper-V installed. And so in the first video, we installed Hyper-V. Uh, and if you're not familiar, Hyper-V is, um, is a hypervisor. It basically lets you run virtual machines on your computer. And so the whole, the whole idea here would, is, would be that you could have a laptop that has Windows 8 on it that's running Hyper-V, and you could have several machines that are running. In this case, they're going to be servers. Um, so in part one, we installed Hyper-V and installed a Windows 10 workstation. Uh, at this point, uh, Windows 10, we just have a community technology preview. And then uh, in part two of the series, we installed two instances of Windows Server 2012 R2. Uh, and so those are base, those are just fresh installs of the operating system. Uh, and we did install um, DHCP and DNS on both of them. And so the agenda for this session or for today's um, uh, part three is we're going to stand up Active Directory, get DNS configured and get DHCP configured. Uh, first on a primary domain controller, and then we'll set up a backup. Um, so our backup domain controller is set up the same way. So let's dig in. Now, before we get started, just to level set, um, let me just re-explain what we did here with the, with the networking. So at uh, on my network now, I already have an Active Directory, and I have DNS, and I have DHCP. So I can't really, I don't really want to set up a domain here that's going to interfere with it. And so what I did is I created uh, truly what you can consider a sandbox in that this is using an internal virtual switch, which basically that's a very similar to a uh, picture if you're in a big room with several computers connected to a hub in the middle of the room and that hub isn't plugged into anything. So the, any of the computers that are part of that internal virtual switch, they can see each other, but they can't see the host machine and they also can't get out to the internet. Um, so that's kind of good in this, in this scenario because basically we can have um, we can basically mess around with computers that can't get to the internet and can't mess with our internal network, but we have access to, to get into them. So that's that's the setup here. Um, I'm just doing that because that's going to be the easiest to demo. Uh, in real life, if you had, you know, if example.com was your domain name and Tampa was going to be the Active Directory name on you know, for your on-premise domain, uh, which is at your house or um, or at a business or whatever it's going to be, and this is the machine name, right? If that was the case, um, this gets a little bit more complicated because Active Directory is going to have to be able to talk to this domain uh, in order to set up DNS delegation, and you do have to set up DNS delegation um, beforehand so that you can become the authority, um, uh, the authority for this particular subdomain. So to just take all that out of the equation, um, we're going to try to keep things as simple as possible just by having this be um, more or less just a private network that sort of lives on its own. It can't talk to any other machines except for the ones that are in this Hyper-V. Um, and we're going to sort of start from that. So how we connect to these. Um, so normally you would think we could just use remote desktop, but in this case, the host machine uh, can't really talk to it other than through Hyper-V because it's in a virtual switch. Um, so the good part is I can just double click these. I can just double click a uh, any of the virtual machines that I can connect to it. And you'll see if I run this in full screen mode, um, this actually looks very similar to uh, remote desktop in that you know it has like a pinnable little uh, toolbar up here. Um, but basically that's the way we can interact uh, with these um, uh, with these uh, virtual machines. So we're starting on the PDC here, the primary domain controller. So this is basically a fresh install of Windows Server 2012 R2. Um, and this has DNS and DHCP installed, but they're both unconfigured at the moment. So to get started with Active Directory, I'm going to launch the server manager, which usually comes up by default. Uh, but if it isn't, you can always click this the little icon here next to the start next to the start button. So you can always get to it if it's uh, if it doesn't show up. And then from here, I want to do add rules and features right right from the main page. I'm just going to go through these menus. I want to choose the current server. And then the one entry I want to choose in here is Active Directory Domain Services. And this is going to tell you all the things that it needs. Uh, in this case, it's going to install the module for PowerShell and give you the administrative tools. So I click Next, Next. And we're just going to basically go through the wizard. It's going to restart if it needs to. And we're going to let it install. 
Okay, at this point, the software for Active Directory is installed on the computer, but it's not actually an Active Directory server. We have to configure it. So as you can see here, it says installation succeeded, but configuration is required. So there's a link under here for uh, promote this server to a domain controller. If we click on that, that actually kicks off the process of configuring Active Directory. So right off the bat here, we have a few options. We have add a domain controller to an existing domain. We don't want to do that. We don't have an existing domain. Uh, add a new domain to an existing forest. In a forest is sort of at a company level, you know, sort of a company-wide level, because within a company, you might have multiple domains. Um, but we don't really want to do that because we don't have an existing forest even. So in this case, we really want to add a new forest. And so the root domain name, if we go back to um, what we had talked about before, we want to be able to do... Um, this should be Tampa, oops, Tampa.example.com. And the assumption here, uh, and again, and how you might use this in real life would be, imagine if this was your domain name. So this is a domain that you owned, and this is going to really represent the, in, the domain as you're going to see it internally here. And this is referred to as a subdomain. And if you were going to do this in real life, this would have to have DNS delegation set up, which means um, which means that this is the authority, for example, .com for that domain. But um, DNS delegation says, yes, I'm going to allow this server to be the authority for this subdomain. Um, so again, in this case, we don't have internet connectivity and I don't own example.com. Um, so we're just going to sort of fake it here and, um, and go, go along with this. Now the next screen we're at here, uh, this is just telling us what level of compatibility that we're going to want for this uh, for this Active Directory. And in this particular case, uh, we're going to keep everything at the Windows 2012 R2 level, uh, which means that uh, this is sort of going to stay at the at the more modern uh, level. You can basically make it so it would be backwards compatible if you do have older servers. Uh, but since again we're doing our sandbox and let's say we want to learn about R2, um, we're just going to keep everything to be the, la the latest standard. Okay, so we're just gonna click next. Uh, yeah, so, and this is what I was talking about. In your case, depending on what you're gonna do with Active Directory, um, this is where, since we said we're tampa.example.com, this is saying that it can't set up DNS delegation because it can't find uh, example.com. And again, we're running in a sandbox, so that's we expect that to be true. So it's going to basically make us the authority for the whole domain, um, but it's just letting us know that if your intention was to set up DNS delegation, we can't because uh, we can't uh, we can't find the authority for the parent zone. So on this screen, um, this basically shows us what the domain name will look like. Uh, this is sort of the short version of the domain name or what you would use, like if you were gonna use domain name backslash username, you know, in that sort of context. So this is basically what the NetBIOS domain name is gonna look like. Uh, you can typically still use the full, the fully qualified domain name, but this is basically the short name that it's going to allow. And for the most, of the, for the rest of this, you can pretty much uh, take the defaults more or less, uh, unless you specifically want to change where this stores Active Directory or where it puts the logs or any of that sort of thing. Uh, and here is sort of the summary of everything. So we're going to set up tampa.example.com. That's going to be the new Active Directory. The NetBIOS name for it's just going to be called Tampa. Uh, this is only going to be compatible with, with 2012 R2 servers and later. So we're not going to be able to support any, any earlier machines. Um, and we're going to set this up in DNS and we're going to store all the, you know, the basically the database and the, and the, and the log information within the Windows directory. Um, so this sort of just gives you a summary and we're just going to let it run. Okay, so the prerequisites check has finished, and uh, this is going to give us some warnings. Again, this is not really an ideal scenario since we're setting up a sandbox here. Um, yeah, so in this particular case, uh, this is telling us that we're not going to uh, be able to connect to older technologies, like you know the Windows NT um, type technologies. Um, this is giving us more detail about the delegation, the DNS delegation. It's saying it looks like you're trying to set up a subdomain here, but I'm not going to. Uh, I can't set it up as a as a delegated DNS because I can't reach uh, the the um, the top level domain. Um, so other than that, everything passed. So I'm going to click install, and according to here, this is going to uh, want to install and then reboot when it's done. Okay, so the Active Directory process uh, rebooted a few times, and now we're back, and we might notice that the login screen is different. So when you create a, when you promote a regular Windows Server to be a domain controller, you no longer have an individual user account database 
<clears throat> for individual users anymore. Now you only have the domain accounts. And so during the uh, wizard that we went through, we set the password for this administrator account. So right now that's the only account that really exists. So I'll log in as that account. And let's take a look where we are. Uh, first, let me look at the server level. And we'll see that um, it automatically, you remember this is the PDC. Before we were part of a work group called work group. Uh, and now we're part of a domain. We're part of tampa.example.com. So that's a good sign. That's a good sign that everything uh, went well. Uh, we can also now see on the server manager, we now have the Active Directory um, uh, event log and things like that. So that's a good that's a good sign too that things are working uh, the way we expect. And then also under the tools menu, we can go under here and like, for example, if we wanted to set up new domain accounts, we could do that. Let's do that real quick. So under here, I can create a new user account and I'll make another admin account and I'll make this for myself. I make this our cedar and I'll make it the same password for now because I'll forget it otherwise. Uh, and that's it. So now we can log in as it. Okay, so this takes care of, so now we actually have a real live Active Directory. Um, there's a few things we want to go look at. One is DNS, uh, to, because one of the things that Active Directory does automatically is it should have configured DNS for us. So one of the tools menu, I launched a DNS uh, management tool, I guess you could say. This is an MMC pl uh, plugin. And we look in the forward lookup zones, and yeah, sure enough, here it goes. Here's our domain, our um, our DNS domain that that's that's been set up, and so that means that we can now ping um, anyone who's using this as a DNS can now do something like I can ping uh, TPA PDC, and it will go and find that's IPv6, but you get the point. Uh, I can go into NS lookup, um, and I can say for a server, I want to I want to use the local server, and let me go look up TPA PDC, and sure enough, it finds it, resolves it. So that's a good sign. So it looks like uh, at least for for initial purposes, DNS is now configured. Um, so let's go uh, in DHCP. What we'll do as as a very last step, but now that this is set, now let's go set up our second. Uh, our second domain controller. Let's go set up our backup domain controller, which is similar, but actually there are a few steps that are that are a little bit different. Okay, so our PDC is up and running, and uh, DNS is working on it too. So let's do a couple things on the on the BDC, and um, there's sort of a few nuanced steps that are needed. So let's walk through what those might be. Um, so I'm going to go and log into the console of the BDC. So this is the backup domain controller. Um, yeah, the, and the first thing I probably need to do, actually, no, let me, let me do this first. Um, the one thing I'm, I am going to need to do is go uh, configure my network. Right now, I need this server to be able to talk to the other server, at least for domain stuff. Um, so one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my settings here. And instead of uh, using this arbitrary which we didn't actually set anything up for this yet. Uh, I'm going to use the other server for my DNS, because as you might remember, the PDC is actually running a DNS server and it knows about Active Directory. So if I have this, uh, if I set this up as my DNS, that means over on this server, even though this has really nothing, I mean, this is almost like a standalone machine that really has nothing to do with the domain at this point. So let's go to the command line and see how, make sure that that comes up the way we think it will. Uh, and so for here, if I do ping TPA uh, PD, uh, yeah TPA PDC, there it goes. It found it. It's IPv6, but you get the idea. So that tells me that I think this will work. So I'm going to go into uh, my add roles and features. And again, this is on the BDC, and the primary domain controller is already set up. So here, this is all going to be uh, a lot of this is going to be similar. Actually, the installation of it's going to be the same. Uh, it's really the configuration that's going to be different. So um, we'll just do this real quick, and then we'll go and configure it. Okay, so the installation of the Active Directory software is done on the, on the BDC, but this too also needs uh, configuration. 
Uh, and this is really where things start to diverge from what we did for the PDC, because almost every step of this is slightly different. In this case, we want to say add a domain controller to an existing domain. We do have a domain set up and our DNS knows how to find it. So we should be able to safely add a domain controller to an existing domain. Um, I can try clicking select and let's see if it finds it. Um, and if I do Tampa backslash add administrator. And let's see if it finds it. Oh, in fact, it looks like it did back here. Uh, well, yeah, so it, it found it on its own. The credentials, uh, yeah, we're going to use Tampa Administrator, and I typed in the credential. So we're going to say that this BDC is now going to become a domain controller in an existing domain, because we already set up this domain. We just need this to be a backup for it. Uh, a couple other things, too, the global catalog here. So this is basically saying, do you want to have a, a backup store of the uh, Active Directory here? And another one, do you want to have this be a DNS server? And we do. We want to have this be a backup for both of those. Uh, and again, the password, this will be the password that we used uh, for the domain uh, administrator from before. Or at least I like to keep these, uh, keep these the same because I'm pr prone to forget them otherwise or mistype them, as you can see. There it is. And update DNS delegation. Well, yeah, so in this case, this is going to be a backup DNS server, um, and it can find the primary, the, the actual authority for the domain, which is the PDC. Um, so in this case, this is actually going to set up DNS delegation, which means this is now, con it, it's going to make this a, um, a backup for DNS, basically, and it's going to be considered a, an authority. And we just go through the rest of the wizard. I think the rest of this is very similar. Yeah, this gives you a summary. And we this, this same thing, it's going to take several minutes. It's going to take a few reboots. Um, but this is going to do a prerequisites check, and everything should be fine. Then we click Install, and we let it run. So we got an error. Let's take a look. Yeah, in this particular case, because we got this error, um, let's go back and change how we're going to do uh, DNS. And let's, I believe this will work. If we turn that off, it'll still make it a backup domain controller, but a uh, backup DNS server, um, but we don't have to, but we're not going to worry about the DNS delegation part of it. So then we're going to continue and see if we can get through the prerequisite. Okay, this time it worked. I still want to take a second look at the DNS after the after this is done, uh, but I believe this st uh, still should install it correctly. So we're going to click install. This is going to take some time to actually do the install, and then it's going to reboot a few, uh, reboot a few times, and then we'll be able to log into the console. Okay, we're back from the reboot, and similar to the PDC, now this is the console of the backup domain controller, and again, I can now log in with the domain account. Uh, I could also log in with that RCDR account that we created earlier too, because now these are two machines that are both part of the same domain. Uh, same thing, I'm going to do a quick check on the uh, properties tab here. Yeah, sure enough, it looks like it's part of the domain. Uh, the Active Directory, I'm pretty sure, is all set because, I again, I'm seeing the log files over here. Uh, from the main page, I don't see any, um, any alerts here anyway. Um, and I do see the menu items to create uh, different accounts and that sort of thing. So one of the things that, that concerned me was the DNS. Let me go to here to open the DNS. Let me just make sure that, that the backup domain controller uh, DNS is set up the way we think it is. So I should be able to go here. Well, that's a good sign. And so I can right click on this and I should be able to right click here and look at the details to see that it's a backup, uh, that it's a, yeah, here it is. It's an Active Directory integrated. Um, yeah, so it looks like this this is all set up correctly. So. On the BDC, we now have a um, we now have DNS set up correctly now too. So at this point, it looks like we have a functioning Active Directory on our sandbox uh, in this private network. Thanks for watching. If you like videos like this, please subscribe to this channel, follow at Rob Cedar on Twitter, or go to blog.robcedar.com.